Welcome to the Libertarian Counterpoint. I'm Richard Fields. On the program uh, today, we have Philip Lorea, the, uh, the uh, editor of uh, Minute.com and uh, an investment advisor, John Cameron, the author of uh, Rewire, Requill, Rekill, uh, Selling When You Can't See the White to the Rise, Development Officer at PLF, and Tyler Kuski, who is the chairman of the El Dorado County Libertarian Party. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Good to be here. Uh, on, the, on the agenda tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, immediate initiatives that the uh, newly uh, inaugurated Trump administration has, has done. The first one is that uh, Trump has, with a stroke of the executive pen, uh, undone uh, a couple of the Obama signature moves. He has okayed both the Keystone Pipeline and the Dakota Access Pipeline. Those are very, very controversial in some circles, even libertarian circles, particularly the Dakota Access. Uh, did, did Trump make the right move in saying, let's ship oil by pipeline rather than by truck and rail? The, uh, uh, the, the North Dakota pipeline, that's going to be a problem. How uh, so? Well, it's a perception problem. It's a PR problem. You know, well, it's a huge uh, PR problem because uh, of all of the uh, Indian tribes that have been making it a signature issue. Well, and it's federal land. And so it really is. Um, you know, Obama had really favored the pipeline. And, uh, you know, the, once the perception turned to this is federal land, this is a federal issue, Mr. Obama, you are the one who are attacking these Indians. And once people knew that, he went, well, okay, jigs up. You know, and that was about three months where people wondered why wasn't Obama getting involved. The, the essential point comes down to how much land the federal government and state governments own. It's about 50% of the U.S. land mass is owned by government in some form or another. This is going to be a, 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 a Trumpian negotiation, and I don't know, um, you know, either, either he's got to move the, the people off the dime that are, camp, or are going to camp out, or he's got to move the, uh, the energy, I think it's the name of the company that owns that uh, pipeline. But maybe he sells the land, maybe he sells the federal land, and then it's not an issue. But this one's going to be a hard one. So let, let, me, let me ask you a question about it. You're saying that Dakota Access... <clears throat> From what I understand, um, most of the tribes were okay with it. And uh, there were some troublemaking tribes who basically got all the press, and it wasn't a, a, a mass of the tribes who were affected by the pipeline. They were fine with it. It was just a couple of them. Yeah, I think I think there's a couple of tribes, a couple of troublemakers. Uh, well, I, that's kind of a bad way to put it. Yeah. There are a few of the uh, of the people who are affected uh, locally that uh, raised a stink, but it's really something that the environmental movement yeah. has been piling on. And the on. environmental well, movement's the piling on, the, and there the tribes. There's another pipeline side right next to it. And but and the pipelines, uh, the the Indians that are raising the biggest stink aren't even affected by the pipeline. Yeah. I so mean, that's not, so I'm under, wondering why that's a problem. Is it the whole federal land problem well, or the I, fact that we're running yeah, over the as, Indians? As I what? see it, there, there are, in the public perception, there are two issues. Forget about the Indians, mm. but as far as the public perception, there are two problems. The first problem is one of safety. The whole uh, shtick among the environmental movement is that pipelines are dangerous, They're oil spills, et cetera. Uh, it's, it's too dangerous to build a pipeline across uh, the, uh, the groundwater or across the water resources of the Missouri River, wherever the heck yeah. the It's a danger to our uh, groundwater. It's a danger to whatever because of spills. It's a danger. That's, that's, the, that's the, the one shtick. And when it comes down to reality, facts on the ground, if you're going to move oil and gas from point A to point B, you can do it in one of three ways. You can do it uh, over land. You can do it by pipeline. You can do it by rail. Or, by or you truck. can do it by truck. If, if it's across the ocean, of course, you can do it by sea. Uh, of the methods of shipping oil that are the safest, it's by far and away pipeline. safer to ship by pipeline than it is by for, for most purposes, well, let's talk about by truck or well, by rail. Uh, was, well, and to, the, 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 thing, the reason it's more of a PR issue than anything else is that there is currently a, a, a natural gas pipeline running directly next to the, that, it's just a small connection. So the pipeline has been built, you know, north and south of it, yeah. and it's just this one connection, uh, the last connection. Mm -hmm. 
but currently there is a natural gas pipeline that is running adjacent to it, like literally right mm -hmm. next to it. Mm -hmm. So what's the problem? So, well, that's exactly it. So the, uh, the idea, as you say, the perception of what would happen, it's already been cleared by you know, the, the, the EPA yeah, of all, all places. People. I yeah. mean, if they cleared it, uh, uh, so... Was so the, the Army issue Corps is just finally, the, they, they, they knuckled under... No, knuckled it, under no there's no reason not to clear it. I mean, yeah. there is no excuse. I mean, if you take a look at pipelines in the United States, the, cover, the country is covered with pipelines, well, there's particularly, one, particularly in, the, in, in Texas and, and in the... Well, uh, there's one right here in Sacramento. I live not far off of Bradshaw Road, and there is a pipeline from there to the Bay Area that gas. nobody knows about. And there it is. What they do with these pipelines uh, is is freaking amazing. And have you how many? The only pipeline disaster we've heard about was uh, delivery of natural gas to um, uh, PG&E. Of course, PG&E was involved in it. A uh, little local and uh, little people died, and I I don't mean to belittle Same that. And and they they You're died. About the local the, delivery in, in the Bay yeah, Area. in the Bay Area, and yeah. they died because uh, of a. Um, subcontractor being so stupid that they used the um, casing that covered the pipeline uh, during transportation and shipping and packaging instead of the pipe itself to some of these individual users and that was caused the problem. Now when you look at these industrial pipes that carry uh, the that have you can put a pig in them and a pig is like a stopper and have them go down the pipeline uh, and you'll have one grade of oil behind the pig and one in front of it. Um, it is by far, as you said, it's an amazing technology. The, the United U.S. is covered in these pipelines, and it is by far the, um, by far the safest, the safest, yeah. the most economic. So the people who are <laughs> arguing against the pipelines on safety are talking through their hat. Yeah. They're lying. They're misleading they're lying. the public. It's a, it's a total a total nonsense issue. Mm -hmm. The second issue is one which libertarians I think can get can get upset about, and that's the issue of eminent domain, mm -hmm. because the pipelines are going across in some cases, in many cases, private property. It's mm -hmm. being acquired by eminent domain. That means that it's being acquired not necessarily with the uh, from a willing seller. You're being forced if you're a, if, the, if you're the private o uh, property owner mm -hmm. in the path of the pipeline. You're being forced to sell the right of way whether you want to or not. And as a libertarian, I would argue against eminent domain at all. I realize it's in the constitution. Uh, it's in the constitution for public uh, uh, facilities, namely courthouses and highways, but it's not in the Constitution until it was interpreted that way to be in the Constitution for private, uh, uh, for private action. Well, we all know that Tr Trump is in favor of eminent domains. So. Well, yeah, I understand that. But leaving aside the issue of eminent domain, I mean, eminent domain affects railroads and highways just as much as it does pipelines. Yeah. So it's, so it's, there's no difference between the three when it comes to eminent domain. They all use eminent domain. If you're going to make an argument against eminent domain, shut down the highways, shut down the railroads, and shut down pipelines, all, all three. You can't just single, single out pipelines and say only, eminent, only, right. only pipelines have to uh, be uh, from, correct when it comes to eminent I, domain. I, I agree with you on, on both those points. From a safety perspective, uh, the pipeline is the most efficient way to do it. I think the real problem goes back to the connection for, with the, 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 the Greens the, um, I would call it the Arab oil empire and the, the criminals at the heart of the, the Democratic um, Party. And it's um, keep our friends in the, in the, uh, in the Middle East happy and um, well, you've keep got prices a, high. Yeah, you've got a Baptist and bootlegger alliance. Yeah. A Baptist and bootlegger, by that I mean you've got an alliance between People who are trying, to, who are who are who are profiting, namely, say, Clinton Foundation. Does that ring a bell? Mm -hmm. Who are profiting from keeping Saudi Arabia in charge of oil uh, prices and oil supply? You've got a, a, an alliance between those types of people and, and with and with the Greens, yeah. who would, if they had their druthers, get rid of all that energy use altogether. Even though, of course, they would starve in the you know freeze. Oh, not them, because they're the elite. They well, wouldn't starve. It'd be the rest of us. Yeah. Somebody, somebody would freeze in the dark. Yeah. Not uh, them. And not, yeah. But not that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't think that you know a lot of the, the, the naive greens haven't thought it through. The uh, ones who are using green as a cover story for their own dubious ends, they have thought it through. They're interested in control, and that's mm -hmm. all they're interested mm -hmm. in. So you've got people who would pay lip service to shutting down fossil fuels altogether, the oil sands, mm -hmm. fracking, uh, drilling wells at all, uh, drilling on public land, all of the, the anti-fossil fuel, anti-coal, anti-natural gas, mm -hmm. whatever it is, they're against energy. You know, they think that you can uh, power the world with solar energy, except that you don't want a solar panel in your backyard. Or if we just if we move the sun a little closer. Oh wait, but well, then solar, that would be solar, that would be global warming. Then. Solar is actually has uh, has critical mass now and is actually taking market share regardless of price, which is well, that's good, and, and that's a good thing, and eventually it will. But eventually. I think, from a libertarian standpoint, it's not so much an uh, eminent domain, certainly, but the larger issue, and this goes back to Teddy Roosevelt and right on through the progressive agenda, is that uh, Teddy Roosevelt claimed an enormous amount of land and called it the federal government's land. Which was the first mistake. And this has gone on through yeah. successive progressive generate. And so the problem that, for instance, a Trump has now is that this is a federal issue. He cannot simply say, okay, look, this is states' rights. You work it out. If he were able to do that because it was not... Well, so fine, it's a federal issue. That makes it simpler. You just say, well, okay, we're going to build It's federal land. We're going to build on federal land. Well, it makes it more complicated um, because how, how, uh, it, makes, it, forces makes it, more Trump, it forces Trump to do... Uh, to say I'm in favor of these against those and where Trump seems to be going as his inauguration suggested was give it back to the people give it back uh, let's make oh, okay like so in the sense give. that you're not giving it back to the people because it's already owned by the feds exactly yeah but still why not sell it why not take well, yeah, because there's, there's a, a movement there's a solution, why not right? take That's uh, not all happen, that federal think. land and sell it uh, because then, you know, if you're worried about tax revenue, if it's federal land, it's yeah, not so, going to produce Sell it to the Indians tax. for a dollar and let them make the profit. I think there's your solution. Uh, but they, they do it with Again, casinos. in Why this case, oil, all the, I've done a little bit of research on uh, Dakota Access, and I want to make the point that, that all the, in, all the uh, tribes that are actually affected by the pipeline, there's only like one that's against it. And it's basically people who've taken on that mantle of I'm I'm an American Indian and this is destroying my sacred blah blah uh, and it's not their sacred blah blah it's somebody else's so it's well, it's really happened, uh, just a bunch of rabble marousers and troublemakers funded it's greens let's just call them what, what gave Obama the out on the Keystone which he was basically in favor for I mean if you look at Obama's yeah. record he was a good oil man he was good to the oil companies uh, what ultimately did the Keystone in was that Nebraska would not let it go. Part of that, what had, where the Keystone had yeah. to go, had to go through Nebraska. Nebraska happened to own the land. This was a part that was not federal land, which gave, ultimately, prevented the Keystone from being built and ultimately gave Obama, when it was you know, popular to be so, to say, well, you know, I wasn't so in favor of the Keystone anyway. Now the oil is $30 a barrel. Uh, and so, in this case, what we don't have that out that says, hey, this is a state matter. If it was, then Trump could say, well, you know, I wash my hands of it, you know, uh, constitutionally, good luck to you. Uh, but otherwise, this is his problem. Well, it'd be interesting to see whether he is successful in getting uh, a completion on both of those pipelines mm -hmm. and, and pipelines to come. The other uh, construction project that he has initiated uh, from the get-go is the the, the big, beautiful wall between Mexico and the United States. Now, I've always wondered, is that going to be down the middle of the Rio Grande, on the Mexican side, or on the American side? Well, and man, how much beachfront property is he going to be, or riverfront property, yeah. is he going to be spoiling uh, in building that wall? The, the other question is, the only people that are willing to work that hard that I've seen um, anywhere are you illegal, mean laborers? Or illegal <laughs> Mexican laborers. So, um, are they going to get an exemption to work non-union on this wall uh, or um, you know because if you hire you know if this is typical government contract stuff you know well, all the Mexicans that are alive to alive today will have died of old age before this wall is built yeah, I mean if you take a look at the history of walls you have the Chinese wall the, the Great Wall of China 
didn't succeed in protecting Chinese from the from the Manchurians or whoever they were trying Mongolians. to protect. Mongolians, yeah. Mongolians, whoever they were trying to protect. Or the dragon, depending on which movie you're watching. Uh, you've got the uh, the Berlin Wall that eventually fell, and while it was up, and did the opposite effect. What? And did the opposite effect? It was meant to keep the West Berlin's out, but ended keeping the East, East Berlin's, Berlin's in. in. Right, right. Uh, when you're talking about uh, basically any kind of wall you can think of, the drug smugglers the migrants, the people who want to get across the wall will go over it, they'll get a taller ladder, or they'll dig a deeper tunnel, or they'll swim around it at the end uh, in the Pacific Ocean. There's no way that a wall is ever going to be effective. And let's look at uh, how currently we have the angry left that's been protesting and, you know, the, flipping, the angry left that's been protesting and flipping trash cans and yeah. setting police cars on fire. Uh, generally, these are the uh, anarcho-communists and, and other forms of leftists or Marxists. W what's to stop them from doing something like that to the wall while it's being built? I mean, it's pretty easy to rig explosives and, you know, do something like that. Is there going to be a lot of money put into security? They may not, want, they may, they may not want going to, down to that southwestern arid environment. Mm -hmm. It's not as much fun as uh, D.C., but... Uh, well, I think Soros, um, you know, we'll he'll, he'll, yeah. he'll bust them down there. Yeah. You know, but the question is... Uh, a big part of that wall is going to be in Texas. I'm, you still, I'm, I'm, uh, I still don't know where that's where that is in relationship to the river, to the Rio Grande. Well, it my you know my question would be, uh, I guess you could be right. It's actually know? California. Is. I don't it's not uh, Texas. It's California. I don't the think the Mexicali border. I don't. That's think, where the wall is going. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. It's going well, right, but California. you've got but the Texas border is the longest border with Mexico. I yeah, but the wall that, is going in California. Well, fine, but yeah. so, you just, so, you come, so you come in through Texas, big deal. Uh, you know, it's California. Yeah. Well, so I, I guess my question would be, you know, but I have many questions about the wall. Being a libertarian, I mean, well, let the, people the, go where they will, and, 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 you know, if they're willing to work hard, uh, you know, again. Yeah, the, fundam the fundamental question comes down to why in the world are we saying that we can draw, we the United States or any other country, can draw an imaginary line on a map or through the sand and say, if you were born on this side of the, sand, of the, of the line in the sand, that you have to stay on that side, even though somebody on the other side of the line is more than willing to give you a job, sell you a house, do whatever, they, you know, do whatever free people can do in uh, free agreement with each other, why does government have any, any authority to prevent free transactions between free people? It doesn't. Well, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. But it's I, anti -capital, capitalistic I mean, it was even predicted that if every country had open borders, the world GDP would actually double. Who uh, predicted that? That's interesting. It was the uh, Open Borders Foundation that they had did, did some stats. And it was on the. That's Soros, isn't it? I don't know if it's stores. They, they gave actually a lot of libertarian philosophies on there, so they had libertarianism and stuff. It might might, might be have have some of his funding there, but it definitely did t touch into. Yeah, the but I mean, yeah. There's no question that if you have open borders, if you have open immigration, the world economy as a whole will do much better. Now, that's not to say that some people will do a little bit worse at the expense of some people who at the across local the border level. who will do a little bit better. But that's okay. That's what competition is. Yeah. Competition is about giving everybody equal opportunity, mm -hmm. not giving anybody equal results or superior results. And what the nativists in this country are saying is that because I was born on this side of the Mexican border, I deserve better results in my life than people who are born on the other line, the other side of this imaginary line. And that's nonsense. Well, I have, I have a better idea. Um, let's uh, not build a wall, but just deport anybody who can't trace their ancestry back um, from 1694 forward. If you haven't been here since 1694, which is when my... How about my, 1490? Oh, that's... Okay, your, 1694, your ancestry. 1694 is yeah. when my, my mother's uh, relatives got your here. D-A-R. Uh, D-A-R. My mama was a D-A-R. Yeah. So... Um, uh, I think that should be the date, rather than this wall and who's, we well, just deport everybody who can't trace their ancestry back to there. Oh wait, that's bad? Yeah, so all these, all the people who are yelling for this wall um, are pointing at the wrong 
boogeyman. The boogeyman isn't uh, the person coming here from Mexico. Well, their argument, Mexico. Is, argument is usually <laughs> that they're okay with, with immigration. It's just that they want it done through a legal process. Well, yeah. But the problem is the legal process takes about 10 years to get done. The and legal process is just, a, is just a, an anchor, uh, a, an impediment. Well, yeah. and, the, the, and, and, and the, the, they've been, their anger is misdirected at people taking their jobs when actually it should be directed at the government that has destroyed their jobs. Well, yeah, I mean, if you take a look at the regulatory cost on the economy, that accounts for a huge portion of job loss in the country. And then if you really want to take an economic analysis, the job loss is much more to automation, to robotic replacements for human, you know, to a mundane human labor. And, and the fact that's, that... And that's, yeah. that's not going to stop. That's going to be exacerbated by the fact that the same people who are complaining about immigration are also lobbying for minimum wage being higher. Well, and the problem, you know, they've, uh, the problem the, to me, the essential problem is that for different reasons, both Democrats and Republicans oppose immigration. Uh, the Democrats, because they're always gatekeepers, you know, scarcity is always a good thing if, you know, you've got, you're inside the gate to close it. Uh, and for the Republicans, it's just flat bigotry. Uh, but all of the economic studies show that, in fact, immigration is at worst a neutral uh, to the whoever happens to be indigenous, uh, to slightly positive in that the people who are there first tend to assume more supervisory roles over the people who are coming in. Mm -hmm. So it tr it seems to be a slight positive, if anything, but generally speaking, well, neutral. and that's that's under a cor current abhorrent system where um, we have this welfare state where people can come in and sign up for transfer payments. If those transfer payments weren't there, um, then then um, the only way people would come is if there was available work. Yeah, and, and, and there's, that and the would mean that your um, calculation would guarantee that they were a net positive. Well, one of the problems here in California, which is where the wall's coming, uh, the farmers in Napa, all the wine country, say, look, it's not that we don't want to hire Americans, it's that we can't. Yeah, there's nobody America. coming. Yeah. Well, no, there there was right in town, we had an example, Akita's, Akita's they had a big nursery they've sold out since. Um, the uh, La Migra immigration came in and demanded that they show uh, papers on everybody. And their long-term supervisor, who'd been there 30 years, that they thought was a citizen, wasn't. They had to, to let go, um, I think it was like half their labor force. Yeah. And so they advertised and they said, you know, please, high school kids, uh, be citizens, young people, Anybody, come on down. We got a job for you. All you got to do is be willing to work. They had five people show up who weren't illegals, in essence, who were high school kids or in between work or whatever. They had five people show up and fill out applications. Three of them showed up to work after they were accepted. One lasted a week. And so the only people that will take low level jobs are the, the lowest people on the economic rung who aren't being supported by welfare, which is the equivalent of a salary of $67,000 a year for a family of four. And without them, the economy cannot run. And it's been that way throughout time. That my, Some of my ancestors were Irish. They came here, and the sign said, what? No Irish need apply, because they would work for half of what anybody else would work for, because they were starving in Ireland. Starving to death, literally. Yep. So anything was better than starving to death. So. You know, it, it, this has never worked, it's never going to work, it's simply going to drive up the cost of labor. And if the, well, the nice thing is, is if it's a government uh, supervised and designed wall, that it, it will fall over at the <laughs> first strong wind and it'll take 100 years to build, so it's a moot point. <laughs> I want to go off topic just a little bit here and uh, sure. let, let uh, since we're both from PLF, do, some, do a little bit of bragging on the Hawks case. Oh, yeah. Tell us a, a little bit about, uh, we, we won that at the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, it's, it's late uh, enough to where I've been up since like 3.40 this morning. So in the, the, the jurisdictional determination um, 
the what what has happened is the regulatory agency has set the rule and enforced the rule and this was being the, the Army only, Corps of Engineers. In this Army case. Corps of Engineers and the EPA in a very convoluted marriage. And if if they came in and said this is a wetland uh, and and you're now prevented under the Clean Water Act from mining your peat in this case. Um, and oh, by the way, if you want to appeal to anybody, um, it's us, um, and you can't take your case to the court. And don't bother appealing because we're going to turn you down. That was actually the case, and so uh, Pacific Legal Foundation took the case to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, "No, <coughs> we're yeah, that's not right. We're we're going to um, we're going to allow these jurisdictional determin jurisdictional determination, right? yeah. wasn't it? Yeah." To be argued in a court of law, um, uh, meaning because a, it's meaning a, a federal final, court, a federal court, court. as opposed final, to an administrative hearing. Right, right. So because the administrative hearings were held with the same people who, who basically was Made asking the, the, the king place. for permission for something, and the <coughs> king said no. Oh, by the way, appeal to me tomorrow. Oh no, don't, because I'm going to say no tomorrow. I mean that's how it worked. So um, the the Hawks case. Um, went to a federal court, and the federal court said, no, no, uh, EPA, you're wrong on saying that this is, uh, this is uh, a wetland. You're out of here. So, um, so it went to the U.S. Supreme Court. We've got a victory at the U.S. Supreme Court in favor of the 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 Hawks fam or the yeah the Hawks family in favor of their the ability Pierce, the Pierce family to to plead their case and in just court. To, just to give you a little bit of a background on the, on the on the Pierce family, they're they're mining peat for the for use golf in golf courses, courses and what nurseries, sort of thing. Yeah. right? They're mining it from land that is by definition wet because it is in it's fact, a bog. It's peat. It's a peat bog. Yeah, but the underlying law, the Clean Water Act, says it has to be within, uh, in order to be considered a wetland, it has to be within, you know, it has to be navigable water. Within and the nearest miles navigable water was the Red River of the North, which was uh, 100 miles or something like that away. So it was not a navigable water. It was never, ever, should have ever been considered a wetland in the first place from an Army Corps of Engineers standpoint, but they did anyway. W lost the argument at the U.S. Supreme Court. U.S. Supreme Court remanded it back down to the district court, and the district court made a final order last week, or yeah, earlier this week actually, saying, yesterday. What? or was it today? Yeah, recently, saying that yesterday, saying that build your, you know, go ahead and farm your, mine, mine mine your, your peat. Mine you your are peat. off the hook. Army Corps of Engineers enjoined from bothering you ever again, and that is a victory, one that we are very proud of. And, it, awesome. it and we're out of time. So thank you very much for being part of the show. We'll see you again next week, same time, same place, on the Libertarian Counterpoint. What, what's crazy is, is that that seems like a very convoluted case. How often did that happen? Literally, things similar to that, where, in, where alphabet agencies create the rules, enforce the rules, and are also the place you turn for an exception to the rules.